in grooves versus the orchard versus a wall we're going to go over these specific types of music distribution services in this video if you're not subscribed already hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you get updates on every new video that comes out so you can help yourself and other musicians in your and their music careers so uh we're gonna hop into it guys the we had a question this was a comment on a different video just so you guys we read the comments uh somebody wanted to know what's really the difference between in grooves and the orchard and uh a wall services like that versus a distro kit or tune core or other mus music distribution services so they they all have little nuances between them uh but we'll, we'll start with in grooves in grooves is a it's still a distribution service they just have other other uh, services packed on top of it and they may have like a little bit of a different beginning and purpose so with these services now all of them are owned by major labels by the way uh so in grooves is owned by universal music group today uh what happens is these big record labels essentially they just want to acquire as much as many catalogs as they can they look at it like you know it, it's an investment for them right it's a business so in their business they're trying to pump out as many songs as they can uh, and a lot of times artists are not the most financially savvy uh, when it comes to the music business. That's why you hear about people getting bad deals and uh, so on and so forth. So uh, they just acquire up as much as they can and then they'll make their money back through innovation, through technology, through, you know, selling the music, concerts and, and all that. Uh, but with the music distribution companies, they'll just buy them up if they see one that's working well. So Spotify had a significant stake in DistroKid. Uh, they recently sold their stake in, in DistroKid. Uh, but that's that's essentially how these things work. Um, so if you see one that says, you know, it's for the little guy, uh, I'd just say look at the leadership. Not to say that, you know, Universal Music Group gives bad deals to everybody or that Sony gives bad deals to everybody or, you know, so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, just look at the history of these things. So in grooves, um they started in 2002 um they they had a big investment from shamrock capital in 2010 for about 20 million dollars and then recently um shamrock capital wanted to sell their stake for a valuation of about 100 million dollars um i don't know how much the exact deal went for uh but it was bought eventually by Universal Music Group. So when you go to their websites, you're not really going to see like a, you know, a button that says sign up here for in grooves or for any of these because these are mostly label services. So instead of a label obviously paying God knows how much money per year to distribute all of their artists, they just have in-house solutions where they distribute the music um, you know, they'll just pay a developer or they'll just buy out a company uh, that has this technology and then they'll just distribute all their artists so that they don't have to give any cut to anybody else. They're the ones taking the cut um, from artists for all of their connections. If they have playlists, radio, um, you know, vinyl distribution, they have uh, relationships with different venues. Like once you do business with somebody and you, you you both get equal outcome from the deal, then you just keep doing business. So that's pretty much the model for in groups. You're not going to see a button on there that says like sign up here. It's typically you're going to get signed somewhere and then they'll just switch your distribution over to whatever company they are using. Uh, next up, uh, we'll go through the Orchard. So the Orchard is owned by Sony. Uh, they, it's, it's a little bit more of a friendly website, tiny bit. Um, like when you go to Ingrooves, there's really not much there on, on their website. Like they kind of just have, it's like a sign in button and then you choose your language cause they have different offices, you know, all around the world. Uh, but it's really not much there. You're not going to see, there's a button for contact, but it's not much on the Ingrooves website, uh, for the orchard. Website's a tiny bit more friendly, uh, but again, it's not like a big glaring sign up button on the Orchard website. Um, they Their model is if you're distributed through them at all, 
you they're going to take a cut out of it. So rather than having like a distro kid or TuneCore come in and uh, they distribute your music, they're just going to sign you pretty much and distribute you for free. And then they take their cut on the back end. It might be like a 15, 20% of all the music they distribute, uh, whether they do a good job promoting or they kind of like just let it sit in, in the wind, they're going to take a 15, 20% cut. Uh, this, uh, it might be the right deal for some artists. Like if if you are oh, an artist that they do a good job on, then that 15, 20% was worth it. Um, they typically, they're going to take a 20% of like all the, the things. So it might be sync, it might be streaming, your physical distribution, uh, so on and so forth. And then they may have deals. If you're just distributed to, through them and you're not on one of their record label deals, uh, you may have a terms where you can just give them 30 days notice or 60 days notice somewhere around there and you can get out of that distribution if you want to go somewhere else. However, one thing to note, whenever you're signing up through TuneCore or DistroKid, typically they're already taking a cut. Somebody's taking a cut. Uh, so when they present to you, here's a hundred percent of your royalties. Most of the time, that's a hundred percent of the net royalties. Uh, so if if they had a service on top of them that was an aggregator or something like that, an aggregator is just a service that's uh, setting up the relationships with Amazon, Spotify, Apple Music, you know, so on and so forth. That when you push that button, it just sends it to all of them. That's done by a software. Somebody has to develop that software. Uh, so, if they have a software service over them, then they're just they're they're going to present to you. Here's 100 percent of the net revenue that we received. Uh, some services aren't like that. It just really depends um, which one they're going through. So it might be apples to apples. Like if they take that 20 percent over at the orchard. Uh, it may be roughly pretty close to what was being advertised over somewhere else anyway. Uh, so with, with this one, you're just getting all the services that come along with it. So you're getting a record label like structure on, on the marketing side. Um, but you know, it's, it just depends on if that's right for the artist and they're, they're pretty much not going to market it as, you know, sign up here like they do on other music distributors. Uh, lastly for a wall, kind of the same model They're They're owned by Sony too. So that's probably why it's the same model. Uh, they were owned by Cobalt for a while to my knowledge. And then, um, they, they got bought out by Sony. And again, their, their model with this stuff is they just buy up a lot of assets in the music space. So they, there was a, uh, Irish, um, I believe it was Irish or a, a firm in the Iceland, something like that, that owned, um, that was owning 80% of the music that was put out on the island. Uh, and they just bought them up. So they have this large um, monopoly over a lot of the music that comes out. It won't stay that way for long um, in, in my eyes because a lot of people are getting more hip to their, their equity. Not to say that if you get a nice size check, uh, that you're not doing something else with that money. Uh, but that's that's typically the model we've seen so far. Uh, but with AWOL, it's really not much different than the Orchard. Uh, they they do, the big difference is they do have like a big submit your music button uh, on the website and uh, you can click that button. They will um, listen to your music, kind of like an A&R team. So they'll listen to all the music that comes in. And then if you have something good, they'll, contact you back and you know go over terms and they do have three different tiers of record labels uh one where they're understandably taking more of a cut uh, of your music because you may not have as much of a presence yet and they're the ones that are really going to build your audience um but they're taking you know mostly the whole catalog a lot of the times and then you have your second tier where you have a bit more of a presence than your third tier where you have I'll say you're getting a lot of streams per month and you have a lot of followers and you're setting up your own shows like you you have leverage to partnership then uh, you have some skin in the game so you can decide more of your terms whereas if you're smaller you need more help to market your music so you can't go in demanding equity from these bigger players and people with resources you may have good music everybody always needs good music that's why you can get a deal uh, on the table 
but it may depend on your budget, if that makes sense. If you have a good-sized budget and a good-sized marketing plan, then you may not need to sign a deal. Uh, but 99% of the artists we come across, usually that's that's their biggest problem, the plan, the execution of the plan. And by plan, I don't just mean, hey, I'm going to throw my music on these Spotify playlists and do YouTube promo and you know all the things we offer. It's the other services we offer that artists should be using that they typically don't use. So that's going to be your website services, your sales funnels, uh, your product creation, your email uh, copywriting, text message copywriting, all that stuff is what's actually going to make you your money back. Uh, you have to get people directly in your funnel, your your email list, the things you own is what's going to sustain you in your music career. Uh, whereas most people just run to the Spotify and the YouTube promo and you know Facebook and Instagram ads, and they don't set up the rest of their business. That's why they need the record label in the first place, to set up the rest of their business. There's very few of you guys who listen to set up the rest of your business structure. And it's fine if like, hey, I tried this and I, I do need the help. That's fine. You know, that's why we have solutions. That's why other people have solutions for that. Uh, and then we're rolling out more solutions where the artist doesn't have to have as much upfront capital. That's why we're signing deals for artists. If you go to amarcy.com and uh, click the submit music tab, or, you know, we'll have the link in the description, you can submit your music to us. And it's not going to be a deal where we take 15 to 20% of your entire catalog. We're just going to take a lot of equity in one single song or one single project and then push that really hard. And you get to keep all the residuals and all your future catalog and so on and so forth. Uh, and your performance royalties and, um, you know, your product sales. You actually keep all that and we just take a cut of the streaming and sync licensing. So we're doing a bit of different deals than AWOL uh, and Ingrooves and uh, The Orchard. I think it's a a more freeing deal for artists. Uh, they like if you don't want to sign away one of your singles at that twenty percent mark, you don't have to. Uh, you can just pick the ones you want to give a higher percentage of, and then we work out deals for those ones specifically. So, you guys hit that submit music tab. That's the difference between In Grooves, Orchard, and A Wall. They're a little different than TuneCore and DistroKid. Uh, again, a lot of people don't know that that backdoor method of here's the 100% of the net we're receiving and we're giving to you. So when you go to AWOL, you may actually see the same amount of money if you do want to sign up there. Um, or, you know, you can do deals with us and uh, still keep a lot of your catalog and not give it up at that 20% uh, because they have to make money too, right? Um, so it just depends on the the way the company is promoting you all the resources they're putting behind so on and so forth but if you guys like this video do me a favor and hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell uh most of you guys watching this when we look at some of the stats a lot of you guys watching this are not subscribed so you're missing out on a lot of the great content as soon as it comes out whenever information comes out in the music industry uh sometimes you need to know it right that week because it may be an action you can take on when there's a lot of traffic going towards a keyword or something like that. You need to take action on the information that week right then. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get updates on the videos and leave us a comment uh, with any other videos that you would like us to make. I'll catch you guys in the next video.